Piedmont, Ms. Rich from Tennessee Homestead. How are you today? Uh, this morning I'm going to cover uh, something that uh, I've been watching uh, fly around out there on YouTube, which I find kind of uh, almost a little funny. And that is people trying to decide what is the difference between a homestead and a small farm. Okay. Uh, let's start off with homesteads. Okay. Homesteads was originally where the federal government uh, was giving away land in territories uh, to encourage people to move into those areas uh, with the end goal of them becoming states and part of the Union and so forth. Um, that doesn't happen anymore, folks. Okay? It just doesn't happen. Uh, government's too busy taking land away from private ownership and hanging on to it uh, as to encouraging people to go out and uh, uh, move into areas and, and uh, straighten things out. That being said, uh, God love them, uh, the original homesteaders, uh, that was a, a unique breed of people. I mean, they went out and uh, packed up everything they owned, put it on a wagon and hitched up a horse and off they went into the wilderness where they faced hostile Indians. Um, you know, animals that they have never seen before that wanted to have them for lunch, uh, things of this nature. Uh, uh, the mortality rate of homesteaders was very high. Okay, uh, A lot of people died homesteading. It wasn't a matter of whether or not it was economically feasible for them. Uh, it was whether or not they were going to survive. Uh, homesteaders starved to death, all sorts of things. So it was a tough life, but they were willing to risk that uh, for their part of the American dream. We need more of that kind of spirit in this country today, and sadly we're lacking. Okay, so that was a homestead. Uh, you will find that once they became owners of that property, um, they didn't refer to them to so much as homesteads anymore. They were referred to as small farms small ranches, things of this nature. So, uh, the difference between a, a small farm and a homestead? Uh, terminology. <laughs> that's, that's it. Terminology. Uh, today we're talking about homesteading is a lifestyle. It's not necessarily a place. Uh, you're not going to yank your family up and move out to the territories and get given land by the government. Okay? Uh, it is a people are beginning to realize and they're looking at what our government's doing. Uh, Lord, they just presented a new budget, you know, for, uh, I think it was like a running an additional $4.1 trillion dollars in deficit. It's like, we can't, we can't keep doing it. Uh, nobody can. Uh, an individual can't, a business can't, and sooner or later, uh, a government can't. Pretty soon, you, like Margaret Thatcher said, you run out of other people's money to spend. And the bills come due. And here we go. So people are beginning to realize this. And they're beginning to look at the what-if situations. And going, we need to prepare in case this was to happen. Uh, or something catastrophic, even local catastrophic. Uh, to be able to feed our families and to live. Uh, if this other structure that we've become accustomed to begins to break down. Smart. Uh, so a homestead, like I said, the, the actual physical homestead uh, disappeared a long time ago. The homesteading mentality is alive, well, and growing. And uh, it's a good thing because people need to get prepared. They need to um, be able to take care of their families. Uh, when there's no one else to take care of them, there's no jobs, there's no uh, infrastructure to uh, care for your family anymore. But, like I said, a homestead is a frame of mind. It is not a, a place, okay? Uh, you hear people refer to, and I'm guilty myself, I guarantee you, 
uh, of hobby farms. That's where somebody or a couple both have full-time jobs and they do a little uh, gardening and raising a few little animals and things of this nature uh, on a piece of land uh, to offset some of their costs of living day to day. And uh, people look down on that. Well, it's, it's, it's what they decided they were comfortable with. And it's not really, you know, I, I, I get the term hobby farm makes it sound like, man, eh, you know, I used to, you know, build model airplanes and now I do this. Uh, I, I don't think that's their, their thinking on it. Um, so uh, they're, they're doing the best they can with what they have. And uh, nothing wrong with that. Okay, nothing wrong with that. Uh, then you talk about a self-sustaining homestead. That's a different animal, folks. Okay, an entirely different animal. A homestead can be a backyard garden where you're growing and preserving food and maybe you got a couple of chickens running around and a few rabbits or whatever. And where you're putting back uh, food for your family. If things get tough, at least you got some stocks. Uh, if things don't get tough, you're saving a little money on your grocery bill. Nothing wrong with that. Um, but that's a homesteading mentality. Uh, and usually going along with that is I don't want to owe a bunch of money to people and have them coming out here picking up my personal property uh, because my employer decides he's going to close his doors. You don't want that either. So getting out of debt is another part of the homesteading mentality. Uh, and it's good to see people moving in that direction. Uh, wasn't that many years ago, if you mentioned homesteading, you'd, you'd, you know, people would laugh you out. Okay, they really would. So, you know, it, it's a good change, and I think it's good for this country, uh, realistically. Um, and uh, it shows that the American spirit is not dead, but just been asleep for a while. So, a homestead versus a self-sustainable homestead. Uh, and my terminology may not be the only one out there. A self-sustainable homestead, to me, is one where you pay all your costs. Uh, Anything it costs you to uh, have that piece of land and, and those animals and things of this nature and to plant your field and whatever, uh, your land pays for that. Uh, feed your family, your land pays for that. Maybe at the end of the day have a buck or two left to spend on infrastructure or maybe even to go, go to the movies. Your land pays for that. That's being self-sustainable. More or less, you don't need any outside inputs other than what you may have to barter or so forth because like me, I couldn't sew clothes, so I'm still going to have to find a way to get clothing, uh, which means yeah, yeah, I'm going to have to barter with somebody who knows how to make clothes. Uh, all these things where you're pretty much independent. Uh, you don't need an outside source to survive. Uh, so am I, are we self-sufficient? No. Uh, while you know, our food is taken care of and, and a lot of things are taken care of uh, off our land, uh, we're still plugged into the grid for electric lights. It is what it is. Uh, we've looked at being able to power up the house and the barns and the, and the shops uh, with solar and wind uh, power, and it's doable. Um, we are kind of looking at that very hot and heavy, uh, very expensive. Okay. And um, so it's going to take us some time. But eventually we'd like to be there. Um, you know, so once we can say we're totally unplugged from the grid, our land produces, you know, 99% of everything we need, uh, then I can say, yeah, this is a self-sufficient operation. Uh, you know, right down to, you know, uh, being able to tend my fields without the use of diesel fuel. Uh, one of my goals, I'm not there yet. Uh, you know, I can see uh, being back in my great grandfather's day with a, a set of plow mules and a few implements that they drag behind them to harvest your hay and, and plant your fields and things of this nature. Self sufficient. 
Okay, because if you don't have diesel fuel, that, that tractor sitting out there is not going to do you a lot of good. Is it? I know there's biodiesel and things, and we're looking at yeah, and those kind of avenues. Uh, but, you know, it is one of those things where don't let the terminology trip you up. Uh, you can have a homestead because your homestead's here, not out on a piece of land. It's your mentality. Take what you've got and use it. And if you can get better and you've sharpened your skills, and skills are a big one, folks, okay? Uh, you can watch every video out there on gardening. And you can study everything you can study on it. And until you take these two little things attached to the end of your arms and put it in the dirt, uh, you're going you to learn. Some things work, some things don't. Okay? And you usually learn by failure. So, uh, you know, homesteading is a frame of mind. you got to get out there and start doing it, even if it's just a little thing in your backyard. Begin. And then you may find another little patch in your backyard that you can do something with and, and use it. Uh, then you may want to move up to some acreage. Uh, you know, based on you know, I've learned these skill sets, I could do a lot more if I had more land. Uh, so these are things you need to look at. Uh, like I said, uh, homesteading versus a small farm. Uh, they were one and the same back in the day. And they still are today. You can have that small farm on a, on a couple acres of green. You know, you don't have to have a big massive expanse. The more land uh, you have, now I will tell you this, the more land you have, the faster and easier it is to become self-sufficient. Uh, but ingenuity uh, goes a long, long way and you take what you got and you put it to use. So anyway, that's kind of my stance on homesteads versus small farms. Uh, <laughs> they're virtually one and the same. Uh, and it doesn't have to be a large operation to uh, fulfill your needs. If you're just coming into this lifestyle and, and wanting to try it, if you're not out there planting your backyard, um, you need to get busy this spring. Um, you need to learn how to can. You need to learn how to do these things. Your skills is the difference. A lot of people, the original homesteaders, suddenly learned that uh, lack of skills not only meant they didn't succeed, it meant they didn't survive. Okay? At least you've got that one up. You, you'll probably survive your mistakes. Uh, so learn from these things. Go out and talk to people that have experience. Uh, ask them questions. You never know some of the weird things that uh, you know, a small farmer has ran across in his lifetime. Uh, you know, it's uh, kind of interesting. But anyway, this thing's going way too long. Uh, we're going to be making some changes to the channel, uh, trying to improve some of the video quality and so forth. Uh, but uh, right now it's just uh, me and a smartphone, and here we go. But, uh, or I'm going to try to get it a little, 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 little better. Anyway, you folks have a super day, and I hope this video finds you just, just having a great time and living your dream. This is Richmond, Tennessee Homestead. You have a great day out there.